Aesthetic by Benedetto Gocci, 1866 and 1952, in Aesthetics and Metaphysics, first published in 1901. Uh, the chief ideas put forward in his work are that art is intuition and intuition is the expression of impressions. A sense impression or image becomes an expression or intuition when it is clearly known as an image and when it is unified by the feeling it represents. The externalization of works of art by the fashioning of physical objects which will serve as stimuli in the reproduction of the intuitions represented is not art. Art is not concerned with the useful, the moral or the intellectual. The fanciful combining of images is not art. Intuitions are of individuals, not universals. The theoretical activity of the spirit has two forms the aesthetic and the logical. The practical activity is composed of the economic and the moral. The aesthetic values are the beautiful, which is the expressive, um, and the ugly. The logical values are the true and the false, the economic values are the uh, useful and the useless. And the moral values are the just and the unjust. Benedetto Grotti's uh, aesthetic as science of expression and general linguistics, to give it its full title, or rather aesthetic as science of expression and general linguistic, is the first volume of three uh, volumes, it's the first part of three volumes, I'm usually a class of vodka before I started this, where was I? The first of three volumes comprising of Quatche's philosophy of the spirit. Uh, Quatche was quite influenced by Hegel, you know, but I, I don't think I'll get into that with this discussion. Quatche's philosophy of the spirit. The other two volumes are the logic and the philosophy of the practical. Quatche is generally regarded as an inspired proponent of the idealist strain in philosophy and the aesthetic, which is the introduction to his theory, continues to be the work for which he is known. And it is by his aesthetic theory that he is judged. Which, according to his... Uh, own theory is a belongs to moral values anyway. This is where it gets complicated. The entire thesis of the aesthetic rests on the concept of intuition, and because of the ambiguity of that term, Quatche's work has never received the critical attention which is possible for those capable of reading work in the original Italian. Uh, which I am not. I am going by translation here. If there was any Italian speakers who would like to pop on anything that I am saying which is misrepresentative, feel free. Uh, no English term used without careful qualification has enough level, levels of meaning, enough systematic ambiguity to carry the burden of Croce's central idea. If in addition, as may very well be the case, one must bring to the reading of the ascetic a certain um, tolerance of mind, which the prevailing, at the time, prevailing empiricist temper makes difficult. It becomes even more evident that one must resist the temptation to understand Croce all at once. The idea, however, deceptively direct its initial expression, must be built with great care in accordance 
with Koche's plan. With this caveat in mind, it becomes possible to take certain phrases as initial statements of Koche's position, retaining them as expressions to be illuminated by further discussion and reflection, for otherwise they are practically meaningless. Thus, for Koche, art is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but anyway, art is intuition, intuition is expression, um, art is the expression of impressions, expression is the objectification of feelings by way of representative images. Many negations follow from these affirmations. Of them, the most important, uh, for those who would understand Khoche, is the denial that the work of art is a physical object. Khoche begins the ascetic with a careful elaboration of the distinction between intuitive and logical knowledge. It is a distinction which bears some resemblance to Bergson's distinction between intuitive and scientific or conceptual knowledge, but there is a difference. Bergson seemed to be concerned to argue that certain matters cannot be understood analytically or by classes. They must be felt in their internal uh, particularity. To know by being, that is intuition. For Koche, the distinction between the object as known from the outside and as realized by itself is not the critical distinction. Although it is encompassed by the distinction, he does stress... I'll go through that again. The distinction between the object as known from the outside and as realized by itself is not the critical distinction although it is encompassed by the distinction that Koche does stress. Right. For Koche, intuitive knowledge is the possession of images, but of images clarified by the attention of spirit, freed of all vagueness by the act of apprehension. The idea is remarkable enough to need and deserve amplification. Unfortunately, there are examples by the use of which Koche's idea of intuition uh, becomes clear. He asks how a person can be said to have an intuition of a geometrical figure or of the contour of the island of Sicily, if he cannot draw it. The notion that the artist is uh, skilled in the act of transferring an image from the mind to some physical surface, as if his peculiar gift were in the handling of a pencil and brush, is repudiated by Quache. Unless one possesses a sensation or impression contemplatively, realizing it as an individual image, expression has not taken place. Under the influence of sentiment, one may suppose that he intuits. But unless he knows an image as an expression, he deceives himself. To enforce his point, Quache points out that the term expression is generally limited to verbal expression, but he uses it to cover non-verbal expressions of line, colour and sound. Now, apparently for Quache, expression is not merely the clear apprehension of an image. The image, as is, the image is expressive of the feeling which it evokes, and it is as expressive of feeling that it becomes full expression or intuition. Thus, in uh, the Breviary of the Aesthetic of 1913, uh, Koche writes that, and I quote, What gives coherence and unity to the intuition is feeling. The intuition is really such because it represents a feeling and can only appear from and upon that. End quote. He then goes on to affirm that, and I quote again, not the idea but the feeling is what confers upon art the airy lightness of the symbol, an aspiration enclosed 
in the circle of representation uh, that is art. End quote. The uh, bravery of the aesthetic, uh, which I've just mentioned, which is in many respects a superior expression of Quatche's aesthetic theory, is of interest because of the series of denials by which the positive import of Quatche's idea is brought out by contrast. To claim that art is intuition, that the artist produces an image which is expressive of feeling, and that he realizes this image in its full individuality, involves the denial that art is a physical fact for physical effects, physical effects according to Kochi, do not possess reality. It also involves the denial of the claim that art is concerned with the useful, with pleasure and pain. It denies that art is a moral act, for art, unlike morality, and I quote, is opposed to the practical of any sort. End quote. And finally, it denies that art is conceptual knowledge, for intuition is unconcerned with the distinction between reality and unreality. Kroche distinguishes between fancy, which he describes as the peculiar artistic faculty, and imagination. Unfortunately, and we get to the problem of translation here, the translation of this passage of the brevery is misleading, for by imagination, Kotche meant the fanciful combination of images, while by fancy he meant the production of an image exhibiting unity in variety. The distinction can be grasped by reversing the terms. The mere fanciful handling of images is not art, and the composite image thereby produced is not a work of art, but if the imagination holds on to a sense impression, realizing its presence, taking an interest in it, because it serves as the embodiment of feeling, then the image is a work of art. The esoteric character of Quatre's central idea diminishes as one realizes that Quatre was concerned to emphasize the artist's ability to see more clearly what others only vaguely sense. And I quote, this is from the aesthetic. The painter is a painter because he sees what others only feel or catch a glimpse of but do not see. Having argued for the claim that art is intuition and that intuition is expressive knowledge, Kroche considers the critical rejoinder that although art is intuition, not all intuition is art. He rejects he rejects the sophisticated notion that art is the intuition of an intuition, that is, the expression of intuition. He argues that there is no such process and that what critics have regarded as the expression of expression is, as intuition, the expression of a more complex field of impressions than is ordinarily covered by intuition. He goes on to suggest that the word art is often used to call attention to intuitions uh, more extensive in their scope than ordinary intuitions. But from the philosophical point of view, which is concerned with essence and not with uh, quantity, all intuition is art. If the question arises as to whether content or form is the distinctive aesthetic element in intuition, and by content is meant impressions, and by form expression, then the aesthetic fact, the distinctive aesthetic element, is 
form. Because art is the elaboration of impressions, the unifying of impressions into a single intuited image expressive of feeling, it is a means of liberation for man, the objectification of the passions frees man from their practical influence. The artist is a man of passion who is nevertheless serene, that is, because he utilizes sentiment in the intuitive activity. And by that activity, he liberates and purifies himself. The paradox of the artist is resolved once it is realized that sensation is passive, uh, but intuition, as the contemplative and creative activity of realizing images as expressive symbols, is active. Through activity, the artist dominates what would otherwise dominate him. Art is intuitive knowledge and not conceptual knowledge, because knowledge by concepts, according to Khotche, is knowledge um, of the relations of intuitions. Uh, thus, conceptual knowledge depends upon the intuitive, and the latter cannot be reduced to the former. Furthermore, concepts are universals. An intellectual conception is concerned with what is common to a number of things or intuitions. But intuitions are of particulars. Individual images become expressions and serve as works of art. Khotche concludes his discussion of this point with the remark that, and I quote, the intuition gives the world the, the phenomenon, the concept gives the noumenon, the spirit. Uh, but this statement is misleading unless we remember that the world presented in intuition is one in which distinctions between actual and possible, true and false, pleasant and unpleasant, and good and bad, are irrelevant. Koche passes from a positive statement of his aesthetic theory to a criticism of uh, rival theories. He considers briefly, and in turn the theories that hold art to be an imitation of nature, the representation of universals, the presentation of symbols or allegories, or the portrayal of various forms of life. All such theories com commit the fallacy of mistaking the intellectual for the artistic, confusing the concept with the intuition. Once a person contrasts, no, once a person concentrates on the type of subject matter, the mode of treatment, the style exhibited, he loses the aesthetic attitude. He has passed on to the scientific or intellectual activity, the exercise of logic, which is concerned with concepts or universals. And I quote, The science of thought, which is logic, is that of the concept as that of fancy, aesthetic, is the science of expression. As the criticism continues, the outline of Quoche's philosophy of spirit becomes better defined. The theoretical activity of the spirit has two forms, uh, the aesthetic and the logical. The practical acti av activity also has two forms, the, the useful or the economical and the moral. That's that's the two the two forms of the useful or economical. That's one, and the moral is the other. And I quote: "Economy is, as it were, the aesthetic of practical life. Morality is logic." End quote. Economy is concerned then with the individual and his values just as aesthetic is concerned with the individual intuition and its value, while morality is concerned with the general, 
and the values of the universal. Nevertheless, the economic will, the practical will, is not the egoistical will. It is possible to conduct oneself practically without being limited to a concern for self. To act morally, one must act economically, but the reverse is not necessarily the case. To conduct oneself economically is to adjust means to ends, but to conduct oneself morally is to adjust, is to adjust means to ideal ends. To what the spirit would desire were rational aiming at the noumenon, the spirit of the self. Just as aesthetic is concerned with phenomena and logic with noumena, so the econo economic is concerned with the phenomena and morality with the noumena, the ideal. The beautiful, considered as aesthetic value, is desired by Crotchy as a successful expression. Uh, but realizing that expression which is not successful is not expression. Quache concludes by writing that beauty is expression, consequently the ugly is unsuccessful expression, or the failure to achieve expression. Uh, corresponding to the polar values of beauty and ugliness in the aesthetic are the values of truth and falsity for the intellectual, the useful and the useless for the economic, and the just or good, and unjust or evil for the moral. In every case, the positive value results from the successful development of spiritual activity. Croce's central criticism of any form of aesthetic hedonism, of any theory which regards art as the production of the pleasurable, is that aesthetic hedonism fails to distinguish between the beautiful which is the pleasure, pleasurable as expression, and other sources of pleasure. He scornfully rejects any theory which finds the source of artistic activity in the sexual, in the desire to conquer. He admits, and I quote, one often meets in ordinary life Poets who adorn themselves with their poetry, like cocks that raise their crests. But he argues that such a man is not a poet, but a poor devil of a cock or turkey. For Quatche, the physical reproduction of intuitions, the making of physical objects that will stimulate, stimulate those who experience them to the activity of recreating the intuitions, is an aid to memory or a way of preserving intuitions. Physical reproduction is called externalization, and it is defined as the activity of producing stimuli to aesthetic uh, reproduction. In ordinary language, the physical objects found on the walls of art, uh, museums, the statues of stones or metal that stands in gardens, and other such physical created objects are works of art, but for Koche only intuitions are works of art. The inner image guides the production of the physical reproduction, but the physical object is never the aesthetic fact. Uh, to confuse the techniques necessary, for the externalization of art with the art activity itself is to confuse physic with aesthetic. Externalization is a practical activity while aesthetic is a theoretic activity. Art is thus independent not only of the intellectual, the useful and the moral, it is independent of the activity of externalization which is one kind of useful activity. The effort to reproduce the expression by means of the physical object involves the effort to restore the conditions under which the physical object was produced by the artist, works that are to serve as stimuli to expressions are historically conditioned. Quatche concludes his aesthetic with a chapter in which he explains why he chose to add the words and general linguistic to the title. Aesthetic as science of expression. Aesthetic 
is the science of expression since for quoche art is expression, intuition, and aesthetic is the systematic attempt to acquire knowledge about expression. But Kotche claims that aesthetic and linguistic are a single science, philosophical linguistic is aesthetic. And I quote, philosophy of language and philosophy of art are the same thing. End quote. Aesthetic is the science of general linguistic, then, because language is expression and aesthetic is the science of expression. The defense of the, his thesis depends upon Crotche's decision to mean by uh, linguistic a rational science, the pure philosophy of speech, and by speech any mode of expression.